Hi to all the community, Gabo Cavallari here. I am digital sculptor and texture artist for video games, and this is my first series of video tutorials. The idea of this is to demonstrate which ways we can texturize things for Nanite, and it's based in the last video conference we got from Quixel and Epic team members, where they shared to us some nice tips for thinking about when we want to create texture for Nanite. So let's gonna see it together, let's go for it, and I hope this could be useful for you. First of all, I would like to apologize if I don't speak so correctly. As you can tell, English is not my mother tongue, so I'm sorry if maybe I misuse some expressions. Please, guys, don't kill me. <laughs> but well, starting with our main team, uh, the other day, an incredible video came to light where representatives of the Epic and Quixel team developed and demonstrated all the possibilities of Nanite over two hours, two hours and a half. It was really impressive to see. Uh, they shared very cool things about how the technology is developed and how they plan to continue working on it in the future. They shared their roadmap. And I do really recommend taking a look at it. But today I would like to share one of the main points of so many that refers to when they have finally talked about the UVs and textile process. And the thing is, the main key they can share for now is to think about UVs first. This may sound a bit obvious to you, but think of it this way. High poly should now have UVs. In a normal bake process, most of the time, we just export our high poly to use later with the bake. We retopologize of a decimated version and build a nice functional and well-kept low poly. But well, think that now, if we were talk about nanite, it means that low poly has come out of the equation. So you better secure those UVs on your high poly model. If you have minutes, I will share a part of the team's response below. Otherwise, you can jump directly to the tutorial part and check it later. Yeah, we've definitely received a lot of questions in regards to UV unwrapping, um, as well as tessellation, landscapes. Um, Y'all think we can cover some of those a little bit? I'm sort of generically taking about, I think there's 10, 20 different questions in regards to uh, sort of how are we going to work with our UVs? Uh, can we shed a little bit of light on that, what we've been talking about um, at Epic? Um, so yeah, the, these meshes are just like, the nanite meshes are just like any other static mesh uh, from the the import point of view, like what data comes into the engine. Um, so they'll still have UVs, they'll still have texture mapped, mapped to them, just like uh, any others. Um, as far as how how to UV them and, and other DCCs, I'm not going to be the best person to, to answer that because I'm not an artist that goes through this like day to day. Uh, but I can share a bit about what I've heard from our art team, um, which is uh, think about UVing early um, and kind of keep that in mind. Uh, keep keep in mind that that the fact that you will need to do that um, and don't leave it towards the end. Um, there's a similar sort of uh, thing happens when um, if if you make uh, if you start adding subdivisions on your mesh. Um, if you can UV it before you start adding the subdivisions and start sculpting in more detail, um, or if it's just a, a, a standard smooth uh, sub D, if you can do those sub, if you can UV it before you start adding subdivisions, it'll be much easier than if you try to UV it after you've done this. So let's say we don't really have a um, a fancy UVing solution ourselves in in Unreal to solve this problem, at least at the moment. Um, so a lot of it just, I think, is going to come from um, just experience of, of artists in the community and kind of like sharing what, what you learn um, and teach us as well. Like if you if you find techniques uh, that that help this sort of process, um, share it. Uh, we, we'd like to know we're, we're learning just like you guys are. OK, so first of all, I would like to clarify from which point we're starting. Uh, perhaps thinking you first is something common for you due to your usual workflow or because you tend to work with hard surface models that have a well-defined shape from the beginning. Um, perhaps you start on a low poly with UVs, which you then make more complex until you get your high resolution mesh. 
but I would like to cover in this little guy, in this little tutorial, the case of an organic free school that we simply just didn't know how it would end and we play with the shape in dynamic mode until we reach a satisfactory result. For this, I have prepared uh, this small sample. As I say, I just didn't know how it was gonna end. I started this as a free school. I just took my time and started playing with the shapes until I reached uh, an acceptable result for me for this demonstration. So I got here my high poly, uh, which of course has millions of polygons. And I would like to use them as my nanite mesh directly in Unreal. So let's see the projection process a bit to ensure that our nanite mesh reached the engine with UVs. I have here my reference character from Unreal. It is good to always keep in mind and check the scale, especially in ZBrush, to ensure that our model looks good in the size we have designed it. So the first thing we are gonna do is to duplicate this object to save our high poly, which we will later reproject. And I'm gonna rename the copy as Remesh Yulis and the original as Original High Poly. Now we are gonna save the history to save all those details from the sculpture to be able to reproject them later. To do this, we must press Ctrl and click on the Undo History slot. Don't worry, you can do this save at any time. I'm just showing it at the beginning. So now let's gonna do the remeshing process. This is gonna be as always, we are gonna use a seed remesher tool. But the cool part now is that we just don't need to use and keep low values. We can go higher because the main goal here is to keep the shape the most we can. So in my case, I'm gonna use 20 because it's a value that works good for my PC, taking account that the higher the value, the most difficult to process the UVs later. So this is totally up to you and your PC capabilities. But now the idea is to go higher, uh, get a good medium high poly mesh that we can process UVs and start subdividing later for getting back all those details. So let's gonna do it. Process done, I got here my mesh. Uh, as you can see, it's a good base mesh, a good starting point that keeps the overall shape. So it works for me, it's worked for doing UVs. So let's go ahead with the next process and let's gonna start processing the UVs. Uh, for me, and um, for this process and this kind of environment objects, uh, just using the plugin works well. And for these demonstrations, works really, really well, uh, but you are always free to take in out ZBrush, your object, and do your UVs in another program, in the best program that works for you, and have the better control you wanna for your UV shells. Uh, I got another option uh, before processing your Siri measure, which is painting mask and doing polygroups. Uh, there is also another good plugin uh, inside the ZBrush, which is called Polygroupit. Uh, they all work cool. They are really nice to use and easy. They are really handy tools. Um, this is another option that I would like to show you just for you to keep in mind that you can do these polygroups, and ask Siri measure to keep them and use it for process also the topology flows. And you're gonna, you could convert these polygroups also later as your UV shells and moving and play a bit around inside ZBrush. But as I say, just feel free to do your UVs in the way you want and the way that works better for you. Remember, the main goal is just to get this medium version, uh, this lighter version of our Nana Mesh with UVs that then we're gonna subdivide and get back all those details. Once you are happy with your mesh and your UVs, you can go ahead with the reprojecting process. Basically, you just need to bring back all those details, as I said, and using the project history button. So first, let's gonna check our high poly. Maybe if you move it or 
do whatever it's maybe you find that you lost the highlighted and those slots never mind you can always cool control click it again and enable it uh, so now let's gonna look for the option project project history and let's gonna start processing our mesh as you can see all those details are start putting it back uh, we are now in the first subdivision level but you can see that the model is a start extruding is a start moving all those polygons uh, in the way that the original mesh got it so the only thing we need to do is subdivide it until we get uh, more or less the same amount of millions of polygons that we get in our original mesh and reproject it again and let the software work now we are done it's really cool because we got a super high mesh with all those details back and uh, so you if you are in this point you got your mesh with the details back with all the subdivisions level that you've done and you can still continue adding details in a non-destructive way for example i use layers for adding more porosity and cracks um, some other sculpted details that i want to add uh, the best part is that it's replicated through all the levels and of course it's still keeping uvs so it's really cool it's a really good way to continue working on it and having functional meshes for texturing and for nanite representation so now we are in the exporting part we need two meshes for continue uh, one of them of course is going to be our high poly mesh our super high poly mesh indeed <laughs> because it's going to be our nanite uh, with all those millions and millions and maybe billions of polygons uh, just ready to get represented through nanite technology we all seen uf5 demo it was amazing uh, but on the other hand we need a layer version just for texturing uh, this is totally up to you and your pc and what works better for working comfortable in your texturing program but keep in mind that also in the video i mentioned in the intro uh, we got a really nice demonstration from Mixer that at this point they are really able to manage high poly meshes like millions of polygons and texturize them inside Mixer so maybe if you use Mixer is a good option and you could use uh, directly your high or super high poly mesh but if you're like me and you use painter or you got another texturing software in your common workflow process uh, you may need a layer version of your high poly as i said so at this point uh, i would like to call this layer version like mh poly this is just a name convention for myself uh, you are free to use it if it works for you uh, it's just the name of medium high poly because low poly is not gonna exist anymore at least in this process for texturing things for nanite so I'm gonna take the four subdivisions level and I'm gonna export it as mhcliff.fbx and then it's the time for our super high poly which of course is gonna be exported as shcliffrockfbx once we got all that we need and we got our two meshes exported we can move freely to our texturing software as i said i use substance painter i'm just setting up a new project as i usually do nothing special in in, in settings and as you can see you can upload your four or five subdivision level mesh and substance is doing a really good work in managing all those polygons you're gonna work comfortable and you could add colors and you could add mask and all you do in your normal process and you just don't gonna tell uh, any lag or any uh, restrictions in your workflow unless you got a really old pc but in this case uh, as i showed you before you can export a layer version maybe a subdivision three or even two if that works for you on on your texturing process so reaching this point you may be wondering Wait a minute, bro. Should I do a bake or not? 
<laughs> and the answer is yes. You should always need to think about your bake because baking your models gives the software all the information about the overall shape, about the cavities, the convex part, the top, the bottom. It's a full scan of your geometry that allows the software to use this information for creating maps like air, cavity, thickness, which gonna use later for proper and accurate use of smart materials, filters and smart masks. Basically, the software is gonna use this info in all their tools. The only different part now is that you can bake the model with itself. For example, we use low poly mesh as high poly mesh if you are using a really high and close version of your nanite mesh. Or for example, you can bake with a higher subdivision level. You can perform a bake with a five or six subdivision level and you can always bake your nanite mesh as your high poly, but taking account that in some cases it could result a crash because it could result too heavy of processing for your PC. So this is totally gonna depend about your PC capabilities, but I put a couple of examples here, taking account that you could perform all these options. And the idea is, as I said, to get all this information for use it later in the texturing process. So once the bake is done, just go ahead with your normal texturing process. Uh, nothing new here, I just play around a bit with colors and filters. I put my logo over the stone. <laughs> this is just for demonstrating process, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, but as I said, just use, make use of the software as you usually do. And when you're done, export your maps. So here I am in Unreal, the process is simply uploading your mesh and make sure to enable the build nanite option and after the calculations, I've just created a material and simply connected my albedo map and the channels of my RMA texture to roughness and ambient occlusion. The rest was simply turning off the sky and the default elements of the level and adding some lights. I'm not even using special post-processing, but the most important thing is as you can see, if we play around with the different visualization modes, that is a really dense mesh being processed and displayed through Nanite and has got our custom textures. This means we are not completely tied to store assets or materials. This is all up to here. I hope that as a first starting point, it has been useful for you and that can start to inspire and to open the door to you to continue creating and producing amazing stuff for the new technology that comes. And that together we may create a new pipeline of workflow. Why not? One last thing, you can check a post with the complete step-by-step -step of this tutorial on my ArtStation page. I have left the link in the description and if you have any questions or comments, do not hesitate in writing to me. As well, if you would like me to continue developing content. I promise to improve the quality over the time. This is simply the first video, but it seems important to me to do it. Cheers to all, happy sculpts, happy textures, and see you next time.